Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sartucci. And yes, sir, I'm busting out the underwater go fish cameras again. I definitely have been waiting for the prime opportunities, and I've missed quite a bit because I wasn't prepared for it. And by missing the opportunities, is actually fishing when there is some kind of current, and also, too, having uh, clear water or clear enough water so that way when it is deployed we can see what we're missing and or not missing one of the biggest things about deploying the underwater camera is that when we're up on the surface you know we have little to no wind or wind or whatever the conditions may be we sit there and when we're not catching any fish or we're smoking the fish we truly don't know if there's as much fish down there as we think. And that's the hardest thing for us to be able to determine, especially if we're not actually with some piece of gear down there that gives us the technology to be able to see what's going on at that exact moment. The closest thing I have to any of that, especially while fishing land-based fishing, is throwing the underwater camera. But I'm also regulated on when I can deploy it because of conditions. If it's too murky and cloudy, it limits my ability to see off in the distance, you know, to see if the fish are around my bait. Because, you know, when you're getting hit, okay, the fish are there. In reality, how many fish are actually there? Is it, you know, the few that are hitting? Or the lot that are hitting, or the none that are hitting, <laughs> or that are not hitting, should I say. You know, we always make an assumption of what we think is going on down there at the bottom. And we truly have no idea unless fish are getting caught. And the only time I've ever been able to see that, okay, we're catching fish. And, okay, there's a lot more fish down there to keep fishing for other than guessing is when I used to fish on Bob Hall Pier and we would the water would be clear enough that we could see the school of drum and red trout sheephead and all of that just swimming right next to the pier and literally underneath the pier so it would give us an idea of what was actually happening out there now not having that resource of being able to be up on a pier when it's as clear as it is and also too for the fish to be <laughs> swimming right there where we're at really doesn't help us much while we're out there fishing but when they were rolling through like that on those days it really did us did give us a lot of insight as to how the fish were feeding what they were feeding on and what would make them bite because there was times when they swam through the pier you know through all of our live baits and nothing they would two or three times they would swim through in big old groups and sometimes as soon as they would see the first bait they were all over it so you know we started paying attention more to timing um, when the schools would come around and what they would do and how many times they would miss or pass by our baits and we tried to keep up with you know uh, okay they're going to hit every 30 minutes that would work normally when we're out there fishing and we couldn't see the fish because we were taking pictures of every time we caught a fish but when they were swimming through like this, we could see that they were intentionally just ignoring the baits. And then the next two or three times, they would hit the baits back to back to back, you know, swimming through. But as the school would dwindle, because we would catch four, five, six out of the blo uh, out of the bunch while we were fishing there at the end, once it would go around the pier towards the first and second gut, more fish would join up with their group and they would come back with even more but that's all they would do literally they were swimming you know 10 to 15 feet off the edge of the pier like if you're looking straight down on the pier they would swim you know 10 to 15 feet away from the pier all the way around they wouldn't swim through the pylons on 
you know, toward the end by the T, but obviously when they came around the gut, um, in the first gut, they would swim under the pier, and like I said, regroup with more reds that were down there, and their, their school would grow. Well, by the time they came to the end, we would have more fish to be able to hook up and stuff like that. And obviously, there wasn't 50 of us fishing for them, so we didn't deplete the school. We just pulled out enough for the guys that were actually fishing there. And, you know, sometimes there'd be five or ten of us there, and we'd pull out those fish, but we would only hit one at a time for each of us because by the time we were hooked up, the school would not stop. It would keep swimming, and because they kept swimming, we'd fight those fish, get them in, and then we would rebait and uh, reset up for the next batch. And sometimes they'd come through and be hitting, and then other times they'd just keep swimming. So... For us, to be able to deploy an underwater camera gives a whole new perspective of what's messing with our baits, what type of fish are there. Like, I mean, right there you saw that pin perch and, and the puffer fish come right up to the camera. You know, this is stuff that, again, too, once the baits come to the surface and we see what they look like after they've been mauled by these type of uh, a bait fish and or a crab or you know big fish you know coming up and hitting it and or sucking out the meat before you even knew that it was gone or a whole, big, whole bunch of different ways for us to learn about fishing and these underwater cameras are extremely important videos and it really does start giving a giving us as fishermen on the pier better perspective of what is actually going on and right here you can see you know quite a bit of debris coming at the camera i do have it set up on a three-way swivel and as you can tell i am using hollow core braid for my connection point for my main line i do this because it also shows you that a lot of the theories that hollow core braid does not last very long underneath the water you know on sand and stuff like that and if you actually go back through my underwater video camera footages with say when I caught the shark and the pompano and um, red drum in the surf and stuff like that, you'll see the hurricane of debris that was flying all around and being shifted right on the sandbar. And obviously I got the camera back so it tells you that the hollow core braid stood up to all the chaos that was happening down there in the bottom.
if you're new to the channel guys this is what we like to do we like to put our camera footage out there whether it's great it's awesome it's horrible but it gives a lot of people a lot of insight to what's going on underwater and on some of those videos i didn't say anything i just put the camera footage out there to give y'all something to to look at for one but two to sit there and i'm trying to develop a channel where people work together to see what kind of ideas they come up with and or thoughts while they are looking at stuff like that because you know something may speak to them and tell them hey man i noticed this about this camera footage that uh, you know the fish hit a certain way on this day with this type of water this type of bait now also too with the type of leaders that we use on the camera they knew they don't come pre-rigged for fishing they just come with the camera set up with the two loop ends and you have to apply the um or create a leader around it to be able to set it up that was one of the other things through the trial and error of the uh putting the, the camera out there and stuff like that how much float did i actually need to be able to get it upright this is one of the ones that does do it well however you're still still blocked by darkness instead of being able to see the full camera footage right there it only shows you the area that's really lit up on the camera and that really sucks because i mean we still if you look at it if you actually take the amount of uh, uh, video that is with light in it we were still losing 50 percent of our viewing footage off the rest of the camera so we're hoping that maybe they've done some upgrades since then these are still my old cameras i've had them for about three years now been using them on the channel you know for underwater footage fishing them on the jetties fishing them in deep channels and or in the bays like i'm doing here and right here this is rockport fulton pier where i'm fishing at and it was on the days that i was catching one drum maybe every four hours with the underwater footage this is showing us that a lot of fish were not there i mean one did the underwater camera footage or the underwater light scare the big fish away because me and jeff got into a little conversation the other day about that you know that even when they have the big green lights on the piers you don't see big fish sitting in those green lights they'll be sitting off in the darkness and that's where they sit does the green light actually scare them away from the camera hmm i don't know it's just food for thought because the only fish that we ever see in the lights are mullet croaker uh speckled trout sand trout you know all the smaller fish we don't really see bigger fish in there like i said the big old black drum or a shark or something like that now don't get me wrong they will come in they will show up but they won't sit there and congregate where these lights are at and i, I mean like i said i've never really seen it fishing on all those piers in the bays and stuff like that and even while fishing on bob hall pier the bigger trout and reds always stayed to the edge of the light and that's where we would catch our bigger fish so we'll continue to check this out. Let's see how it goes.
And just a heads up guys, what bait I am using on this is a blue crab pincher with some fish bites because I have already caught um, big old black drum using the pincher and I decided to go with the pincher on this bait because it was probably the most sturdiest bait that I could put out there at the current time. Uh, this day I actually had Manhattan mullet, the colossal shrimp, blue crab, and sea lice for bait. And like I said, this was still part of the tournament time when I was fishing a few weeks ago uh, at the Rockport Fulton Pier. And this is a pretty important video because like I said, I was trying to see what was gonna happen with the bait out there and or you know not getting a whole bunch of hits were the drum there and not not uh, hitting the bait were they being lethargic you know um, I mean excuse me let me let me clear that up that the drum were not there obviously we don't see them in camera but as I stated earlier we've never really seen where big fish congregate around a light however I didn't say they wouldn't be in the light. Normally you can see them right on the edge of the light. And I've had big black drum come up and eat my bait with the underwater light. So they're not scared of it. But I have not been able to catch where a large group of fish are there swimming by with the underwater camera. With the light on at night. Now during the day I've deployed this camera out at the jetties and I've had schools of red drum, sheephead, speckled trout, turtles, um, mullet, sand trout, speckled trout, pompano, shark, they all swim by it and are not even phased by it. It's just at night when deploying it, it is really giving us a different perspective of the night fishing and what it has to offer. So again guys, if y'all are interested in these GoFish cameras, we carry them here at the shop. And it can truly give you a lot of insight to change in your game. I have used it in many ways to improve the way I hook my baits on there. So that way they don't get stolen as easily as they normally would. Later guys.